everybody to the Cecil Stedman Experience, the only <laughs> podcast that gives it to you absolutely straight. I'm Alex. S- Stedmania, baby. I'm Justin. <laughs> straight Cecil all the time. I'm Pete. And this is actually Pod Invincible, a podcast about Invincible. We're Her going to be mania. talking about the penultimate episode of the first season. We need to talk, and holy cow, do we need to talk about this episode. Now, before we Ooh. do, though... Spoiler warning here, we're going to be getting into it, we're going to be talking through all of it, so go watch the episode on Prime Video first before you listen to this podcast, or check it out, because there is a ton of big things that go down here, to an insane degree. Uh, This is a dramatic, this is high drama, this shit hit me. Yeah. Wait, Pete, okay. you are you are raising your hand and your little yeah, finger there, wait, what's going okay, on? Okay, just, we, we said something real quick, I just want to kind of, uh, there's only eight episodes? Yeah. Fuck! Are you serious? I'm 100 percent serious. We talked Damn. about that. I know this is huge news. We talked about this on the first episode of the podcast. Yeah, and so. then you forget about it, and mm-hmm. then you get to, and you're like, no, I don't want it to end. You know? Well, I gotta say, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but first of all, I was surprised how hard this episode went. I was expecting a little bit different in terms of the action, just because we read yeah. the comic books. We know what's happened there. We know that 13th. 12th, 13th issue of the series now is going to be in this last episode, which totally makes a lot of sense. But now that I have a better sense of the season, this is great. So good and so hardcore in this episode. I was floored by the action. The way they've brought together all the different things, almost all of them, that they've really laid out is amazing. And... It does make me think that I know what the stinger is going to be at the end of next episode, and Ooh. I won't say that right now. We can talk about it later, maybe. Don't uh, you but don't spoil that shit. Uh, but I really, I was really impressed with the way they brought together all the emotional beats and all the plot threads at the same time here. Now, it to was... give a uh, let me just give a broad overview of the plot before we get too far into it. Even though, again, you probably all watched this episode, but Omni Man has been discovered by Debbie. She has figured out that he killed the Guardians of the Globe, and it all goes down in this episode as Mark comes back from college. He uh, tries to get back together with Amber. It doesn't go very well. He talks to Adam Eve. That also doesn't exactly go very well. He's kind of messing up all over the place, and the yeah. one place he can help, he comes across his dad trying to be murdered by Cecil, who's just trying to hold him back and stop him because Cecil is worried that if Mark and Nolan team up, that might be the end of whatever is going on here. They still don't know exactly what Omni-Man's plan is. 100% reasonable. So he keeps throwing bigger and bigger things at him. Mark eventually teams up. The Immortal comes back to life thanks to some finagling from the Mauler twins, attacks Nolan gets ripped in half again. And meanwhile, in the background, Robot story comes to a head. We find out that he's been cloning Rexplode in a younger body so that he can romance Monster Girl. He was the misshapen baby in the tank the entire time. Transfers a a copy of his brain over there, which I'd love to talk about that bit. I thought that was really fascinating. And uh, by the end of the episode, he is together with the Guardians of the Globe. They are watching everything go down, as is the entire world. So Omni-Man stands revealed to everybody. And the title of the episode is The End, where Omni-Man, who had been rehearsing his speech to Mark, finally gets to talk to him after Mark has seen him kill the immortal, wreck everything, his eyes red, him beaten up, and he says, we need to talk. And that's where we end the episode now. Go ahead, Pete. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, uh, it is uh, uh, an emotional roller coaster of an app. It's insane that, like, how some things in comics were, like, we're, we're so far ahead. I feel like some parts of it we really fast forward and some parts are still in the beginning. So it's a really in- interesting combination that Kirkman is kind of, like, fast forward in some parts of the story but kept some things kind of chugging along like the comic well to be specific about that all of the stuff about robot happens later on in the book the first 13 issues are very focused on mark just kind of figuring yeah. out how to be a Which superhero is understandable. and finding yeah. out about omni-man leading into i know we're being very vague if you've read the books you know what happens but leading into what happens next presumably in the next episode but uh but yeah i agree with you pete the way they're mixing everything around is awesome and it's but only it's built also... episode to episode But it's also to see them finally use something that was a staple in the comic book, and that's punching holes through people. I mean, we Mm -hmm. finally get it, and it is just like, yo, this is what makes this comic great. They go through a a whole lot of hole punching, 
in in ways that we're not ready whole for. A whole lot of holes. A yeah. whole lot of holes. There's been a lot of hole punching, though. Yeah. Um, I think in general in this show, more hole punching than most other television shows. Well, get ready because they're going to turn it up to 11. <laughs> It's pretty punching. high right now. Yeah, it's there's a high nine. level of hole punching. They did it in the first episode. The first episode had hole punching. Omni Man was punching holes in people. Yeah, and then they did it again last two episodes ago, That's and last saying, episode. Like, it was. What a, are you talking it was about? A big, big part of the comic book, and it's all nice I'm saying see. is fifty percent of the episodes of the first series at least have people with holes through them. No, the but name I mean, of the in show this... is in the name of the show is Invincible Hole. <laughs> <laughs> so it's right there. I mean, oh, the the fun running bit of the way that Invincible's name is kind of used is uh, is great, and they they do it really well in this episode too. But it, I mean, this is the first time we really saw the hole through the person, like see through the other side, which mm. was a big part of the comic. There's a great misdirect where he's about to tell Amber that he's invincible, and she oh, slams yeah, the, the door, door and we air. don't get it. Very fun. Yes, that was very funny. That was a fun riff on the title as well. Yeah. Uh, let's, where should we start with? Let's start with Debbie because that's kind of where the episode starts in terms of her emotional arc, how she's dealing with Nolan. Now, I don't know uh, how she slept. uh, This is not, I think kind of a spoiler from the comic book, but in the book, Nolan is much more dismissive of Debbie and not particularly understanding her feelings. I don't get that here i think they have changed the relationship enough so that it seems like nolan really does care about debbie in the show what are your guys takes i agree and it makes for a better just story in general like having him and we get that the moments where he's he's frustrated he's uh he doesn't know how to deal with the loss of of himself in her eyes and we get that here and then later when uh, Cecil confronts Nolan, we get him sort of taking advantage of the actual feelings that I think he knows that Nolan has. It just makes him a better character, more complex. He's someone who like, uh, he's up to whatever he's up to, um, all the murdering he's done. There's still a side where he likes that past life that he had. Also, it's just like very interesting that like, he didn't sleep at all, and when she woke up, like he's just staring out the window. Like that's never a good sign. Like you know, a fight's coming when uh, you know your partner's just evilly staring out a glass window. Waiting There's no reason up. to look out a window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no. Never. You Everything be... you need is inside the house. Yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Uh, or on your phone. Look at your phone. Windows. Yes. That's old fashioned. What are you a, a pioneer? Look at yeah. your phone. The only windows I care about are on my Windows 95 enabled oh, computer. Stop. There stop. it is. That was just... And again, I can't believe we could do this podcast in any capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Running it off of Dell, dude. I got well, it. Yeah, I it got was Adele. interesting the way Omni Man cared. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, uh, you know, and and that also like when you see him practicing on the top of a mountain, it's uh, it's it's a nice kind of instead of just like oh. He's a bad guy now. You know what I mean? Like to see him struggling is very interesting, Uh, especially with somebody who's like all powerful. And also back on the Debbie beat, I think her reactions throughout the episode are really fascinating because she's dealing with these insanely complex things. She tells Nolan to get out of the house. It's very typical married couple stuff, except for the fact that he flies off and leaves a hole in the roof. But then. Well, all I was going to say is then her interaction with Cecil as she's watching him try to kill her husband and then maybe her son and understanding it intellectually on some level, but realizing she can't stop it. And also maybe Cecil is doing the right thing are very, again, interesting, complex emotions to watch on the show. But also the interesting thing is how like they're talking about trust right and that's also part of why amber is mad at mark is that yeah you know there's no you know he's not get, telling her the truth he's not trusting her with information and stuff like that so it's very interesting to kind of see both people struggling uh in different ways it's the the mirroring that's going on in the father's son and then hoping like the son doesn't turn into the father it's 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 well played in this episode you punch a hole in a person Maybe it heals up. You punch a hole in trust, harder. <laughs> really sure. much harder. Wow, well, this man, was one deep. of the discussions that was going on on our Patreon Slack, patreon.com slash comic book club, over the course yeah. of the past wow. week about Amber and whether she was too harsh 
on Mark in, in relation to the last episode, but I think it's applicable to this episode as well. Uh, what's your take? Do you think she is in the right? Do you, are you team Amber? Are you team Mark? Where are you at? Definitely team Amber. And Eve is, uh, reiterates that. She was like, you know, uh, when Mark kind of goes to Eve to be like, help me. I don't know how to be a superhero or a human. And uh, Eve has that funny, you know, like, oh, I'm supposed to help you today. That's who I'm helping today. Yeah. And she was, you know, she gives it to him straight uh, a little bit nicer than his so-called best friend who was cold as ice to him in the car. Like, yo, you straight asshole. Yeah, but so, I do think like Mark sort of deserves a little bit of that, and like I sure, get sure. it, he's caught up in the like the trope of like, well, I'm I can, as long as I hide my identity, I'm doing the right thing. And I think Amber's point is like, no, dude, like if you feel like you have to hide your identity, do better about managing your life because you're not, you failed at that, and you made me feel bad, and you also, damaged the be- my beginning of a relationship. You. And if yeah. you don't care now, like you know what that's going to mean going forward, so. It's like you have to show up on time for the first couple of years of doing a show and a podcast, and then eventually you. <laughs> Pete's How gone. fucking we lost dare Pete. you? How dare you do that? Okay. What's you want to talk married? about trust? You want to talk about trust? Hot on the mic, Pete. Hot on the mic. Oh! You abuse our trust. Hot, hot under the collar. <laughs> hot all over. You don't get to make that joke. <laughs> You got to own your faults. It's important. And I think that's the lesson that Mark is learning as well, where he has had a pretty simple life. We've talked about this a bunch of times here on the podcast, but one of the things that is great about Mark as a character and makes him very different from other characters, teen characters in particular, like uh, your younger Spider-Mans, et cetera, is Mm -hmm. that he doesn't try that hard. You know, he is invincible. So he does fine on grades. He does fine with girls. His friends are fine. His dad is Omni-Man, but he doesn't have to try any hard. It's very like, it's very like kids of celebrities kind of thing where it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I got the money. I'm good. I can kind of do whatever. I'm not going to really try my own thing. And that's sort of what Mark comes off as. But I think what he's learning all along over the course of this first season and what he's running into with Amber and why I am team Amber is, and you were mentioning this too, Justin is he's just not trying hard enough. Like he's doing just enough. He's got to try harder. He's got to push harder. He's got to step up. He's got the great power, but so far he doesn't quite have a handle on the responsibility. And that's the thing that he's going to learn very shortly by the end of the season. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, And I also think everyone around him is more mature than him. He is the mm-hmm. most immature, and even William in this episode is like, "Dude, I'm, I'm your friend, but you're fucking this up too." Yeah. Um, I mean, he just... wasted a burger to, to demonstrate up. <laughs> the power of how 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 much Mark is fucking up. I mean, that burger, oh, just awful to see well, that slide. He only wasted like the vegetables, Pete, which I know are your perhaps least favorite. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. There's no wasting any part of a burger. It's all uh, delicious. I love that example, though, when he was like, you're like the guy in a kung fu movie who um, has been sliced in half but still thinks he can fight. Like, I thought that was very funny, and I love that they took the time to do it. Um, but, yeah, like Adam and Eve, it, she's living her best life. You could tell because she gets a little music montage at the beginning of the episode. And she's like sort of moved beyond all of the dumb Mark stuff when it comes to super heroics. Um, Amber's well beyond him. Well, hold on. Before we move on from Adam Eve, what do you think about her cleaning cleanliness habits? Because she doesn't take a shower or anything like that. She's all dirty and roughed up after a day or two. Yeah, but she cleans herself by you know by her powers. I don't know where's that going. You know what? It's clean. You can tell by the way she get rid of uh, sweat and stink. You know what is she changing that into? I think stink is her weakness. It's oh the one God. the ass stink Adam she can't control. Yeah. Everybody well, keeps saying, "Wow, you look her? great, but you smell terrible." Oh my God, what are you yeah. talking about? Don't you dare shame her. Well, what if you smelled great but looked terrible? Which is the better choice? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I think it's really, great. it's really think about. That's this. a real thinker. I think smell great is is where I would go on that. She is living her best life. It's funny to me that there isn't more conflict with her. It sort of feels like she figured out everything that was going on very early on, and she's just been pretty happy for the past two episodes. Well, she said, you know, she's got to call her mom, so she hasn't been on top of everything. <laughs> Great point. Well, and I also think she's gotten several music montages each episode to prove that she's like living it, killing up. it. Yeah, but I also think 
we're going to realize that she can't this ta- this life of isolation is bad for her it may be like she's not talked to her parents her mom specifically uh mark uh, is been she hasn't talked to him at all and they're their friends ostensibly the rest of her old teammates i think she's going to get pulled back into the world a little Every for good or ill get out. well and certainly given what goes on with omni man in this episode things are going to change dramatically next episode no matter what and it certainly seems like if anybody is left afterwards they're all going to have to deal with a vacuum left by omni-man whether he's arrested or whatever goes on there you you know you know how i'm dancing way to play cool (laughs) zalbo very cool uh let's talk about the fights here too because i think they were super huge amazing the way they were staged i love the way this built and i also love the way that this brought back so many different elements throughout the season from the cyborgs to the giant cthulhu-esque monster attacking yeah. all of that stuff was very fun Loved the space gun that was pretty awesome too just yeah. great big sequences the world's most expensive nosebleed yes yeah Oh. Um, yeah, I thought this was great and really got to show – it was interesting. This episode of a show called Invincible really uh, all, all, mostly only highlighted uh, Robot and Cecil as, like, the powerhouses here. Mm-hmm. Um, and sort of heroes in in a way with a lot of notes of, like, ah, these people are up to bad things. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, they're sort of, quote, unquote, helping to save the world. Like the fact that Cecil had Sinclair on his staff, um, he's doing bad stuff in Debbie's eyes. He's willing to sacrifice Mark to uh, get rid of Nolan. Like uh, he's, he's trouble. Yeah. And I don't know why you're saying Cecil's trouble. He's the only one who's helping to kind of gather information and protect us from uh, Omni-Man. He's doing it at any cost is the problem that he Dude, doesn't it's fucking cold red. All right. He knows it's, you know, it's, it's, he's like can take out anybody and he knows that they know that. So it's, he's just trying to protect. You're just describing your favorite commercial for Mountain Dew code red, where you'll say, I'll do anything for a Mountain Dew code red. Yeah. That's right. Then you slice a guy in half and he doesn't even realize it until a minute later. I mean, uh, if we're yeah. going to bring that up again, I would like to point out, you know, in, uh, in the movie Ghost Dog, uh, it is well documented that if you cut a samurai's head off, he can still complete one task, one more task. Okay, mm-hmm. so like, I feel know, like you're erasing half, you're erasing the movie Equilibrium, where the same thing happens. I believe to Tay Diggs' character, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Wow, um, Tay this Diggs is all great rock. science, if nothing else. So, we are you saying, Pete, that the ends justify the means, or in fact, the ends justify the Pete's? Well, uh, I don't know about that second one there, but he is trying, he is doing a lot of stuff that like may or may not be right or wrong, but it seems like he is on the right side, you know, having the villain um, who murdered a bunch of kids to turn them into cyborgs uh, working for you. uh, I mean, you know, it's, you know, that's that gray area stuff here that I felt like when it's like revealed like oh shit he's doing that oh shit he has this unlock oh like when they fight a a monster they keep it themselves and then jack it up like that's crazy but it's all being used for good it seems like so when you're all like you know I'm just saying right now it's looking like Cecil's the only one who cares and the back and forth that him and Debbie have where she's like this is why I always hated you and he was like, I know, it's why I hate myself. It's fucking deep, man. It's that's some real shit. Do you think that monster is gonna have a hard time getting off amphetamines? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you're that jacked up, I mean That's what on. I want to see next episode. Forget about Omni Man, forget about Mark or anything going on there. I wanna see the journey of that monster. Yeah, I wanna yeah. see like the, road in, to the meetings and like, you know, struggling and mm-hmm. you know. Go to like a rehab center called Progressions or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right by the nice. water. <laughs> you know the one, Pete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's where you got off of Mountain Dew Code Red, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Did man. you got any, by the way? <laughs> no, not here. Uh-oh. Not here, babe. Just checking, just checking. I almost called you baby. <laughs> Out of here, baby. <laughs> don't oh, don't baby. stop yourself. Don't hold it back. <laughs> weird. Let it out. 
yourself. Use your nickname. I love you, you baby. That's why I'm not giving you the code red, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. What is happening? My big, beautiful baby, Pete. <laughs> I feel like I've been swimming. Should we talk about Robot and the Mauler twins? We touched on that plot line yes. a little bit. But this is another one that builds exponentially. But... I was surprised how emotionally invested I got in the storyline. So much. Me too. Like it was, um, it was first off, it was like a complex story told really well. I love the way they took the time after um, the Mauler sort of turned on Robot and, uh, or they both sort of turned on each other at the same time. That sequence of them building the gun around the yeah. room and how clones always know what's going on in each, in each other's heads. I thought that was great. That was a fun little set piece that didn't amount to much, but was just very cool. Yeah, but it also pays off like this kind of bit they've been having, like who's the clone, who's not. And then they kind of have that talk with the Krang uh, baby brain thing there. And it was like, you know, you're going to fucking struggle with this too. And luckily the baby brain dies off. So like the kid could live on so they don't have that conflict. But it's it's the fact that they like see it's not just us was a kind mm-hmm. of cool moment. The simplicity of the line, and I'm paraphrasing, but the simplicity of the line of, yeah, that's why we don't know who is the clone, that they just kind of throw in there, and there's sort of a very wry smile on one of their faces, I thought was so smart. And exactly like you're saying, Pete, it really pays off that bit in a surprisingly emotional way. Yeah, yeah. like a real, like, the fact that they sort of know, they're self-aware of the bit that they're doing, it, it was really great. It was such a nice little wink. And this whole sequence had all these like big philosophical underpinnings like you're the one that lives um this is the hard part for you i thought for sure and the fact that our new uh human teen robot flesh man um is like crying as uh as the krang his krang body dies i thought that was so touching i thought for sure he was going to come out and kill yeah the krang um and to be like I've been wanting to do that my entire life and it really sort of take a little bit of a villain turn there. But instead, it's this real emotional beat. Again, just like with Nolan, showing that whatever robot is becoming and how uh, sociopathic or meticulous he is with the way that he moves, there's still an emotional core in there. But we got to talk about how great Manzoukas is in this episode. I mean... He is. Oh, no, I think Alex wants to talk about the robot media for a second. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. We can move on. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to say were those last gasping be- breaths of the Krang baby were so sad. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. really I got like, a little choked up. I, I could have. I was oh, like, oh, no, it was so, so sad. Much. And I mean, the other thing about it is I personally always struggle with the sci fi idea of clones and transferring brains and everything like that and frankly always fall on the end of no if you're copping over a brain it's not the same person it's a different person so from that perspective i really appreciated this take here because that makes a lot more logical sense to me than yep we took it from the baby krang and moved into this new guy and now it's there you know yeah Yeah. I thought it was cool. Uh, it's the harder I, way to do that bit, to be like, no, now there are two. Because it's easy to just be like, oh, the brain moved, and now that old brain's over. But it's a much more modern, like, I mean, that's the way computers, it's right. never one for one. It's always like, you make a copy. No, what? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I've been killing my old computers? I just upgraded to a Wait, new Dell. What? Oh, wow. Where did you find a new Dell? Oh, God. <laughs> I was on Windows 365. I moved up to 95. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go check the graveyard. <laughs> oh my God! Make sure it's okay. Oh, you have a Alex, computer yeah. graveyard. A lot. Your family's worried about how much time you're spending in your computer graveyard. <laughs> you gotta every Saturday. I figure visit them and I this is like a pet leave some pixelated thing? flowers. Leave, yeah. <laughs> oh, your TI uh, eighty five calculators. <laughs> yeah, I just throw a bunch of batteries on the grave. You know how it is. But uh, speaking of your frankly bit, the Frankenstein bit that they were doing was really fun. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I really liked that kind of like, uh, uh, kind of talking about that and like, who's alive, what does it mean of that whole kind of back and forth was, was it's showed the, uh, the Molar twins, uh, in such a more interesting way. You know, these little kind of throwaway bad guys are really kind of, uh, being fleshed out in such an interesting way. And I still love that they get to run their jewels music every time, uh, they get to do stuff. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with those guys. 
Before we start to wrap up here, any other moments that either of you would like to call out? From yeah, I want to talk about Manzukis. Oh, right. Uh, yes. The fact that, like, uh, first off, uh, you know, genius putting a booze in milk cartons. I mean, the smartest thing ever done. But gross, uh, dude. You know, there's going to be residue. <laughs> You want beer with a little faint milky taste to it? That's how they uh, make uh. milk beer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. milk it's stout, kind of mm. milk stout. Mm. But oh. also the fact that like <laughs> Manzukis's character calls it. He literally says, "This robot guy is going to strangle us all in our sleep." You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's saying, like we cannot trust this guy. He even talks about like the fact that like he saw him fucking with his own shit in such a weird way. Like, uh, yeah, it's just calling out the fact that everybody's casual around this very evil person and the fact that monster girl was like creeped out but then i was really upset by the hand holding because it was like he reveals like he completely opens up and reveals his creepy ass evil plan everybody's like wow thanks for your honesty the whole thing was i was surprised by how direct and honest he was yeah immediately because you know rex is gonna have a problem with being him a clone him <laughs> as anyone maybe would right but uh, he doesn't but robot doesn't care about it he doesn't care about yeah. rex blood's feelings he knows he's eventually gonna he's not gonna cause a problem he could just sort of bull past him with intelligence and his yeah. goal is he likes monster girl and he wants to be with monster girl and that's but, what happens at the end of the episode i don't I, I don't think it was an evil plan i don't take it as an evil plan he did the wrong thing <laughs> several times hmm. but i don't think it's uh evil necessarily well, what's interesting is, you know, the fact that you don't think it's an evil plan says a lot about you. But I think that also <laughs> what's interesting is here we have a robot being completely honest about his evil plan or quote unquote evil plan. Alex, you know, just fine. Sure. Uh, thanks. But <laughs> thanks, man. Uh, then we have thanks, Mark. Baby. <laughs> oh my thanks, God. baby. Then we have Mark. <laughs> who loves you, baby? Who, uh, who's lying to protect people. You know what I mean? And, and there's this like... Uh, when to tell the truth, when not to. It's a very interesting theme that this sh- uh, this episode really deals with. And I do think, I mean, Monster Girl does seem to care for him because he has sacrificed so much and changed so much about his life to even be available uh, to her. So I don't know. That's a lot of stakes for the beginning of a relationship, but it seems like they're both into it. Uh, yeah. also, also, I wanted to kind of talk about there was this moment of like Mark uh, stumbling across, uh, you know, uh, his dad in the fight where it looks like the monster is going to win and eat his dad. And then it's like he comes and saves him. And it's like, no, it was so close to like yeah. Omni Man yeah. dying, like such a fun kind of like almost moment, you know. Um, and and you know, that kind of leads to also to the Cecil moment of like I can't kill this monster because this is the only thing that can stop him that we know of, you know. Um, but yeah, just the fact. Well, that, on, like, on that note, not to sure. interrupt Pete, but I thought it was a really interesting thing that Cecil thinks Mark could maybe beat Nolan because we haven't yeah. necessarily gotten an indication there. So I'm curious to see what makes him think that's possible because. You wouldn't think that Mark is stronger than Nolan, but maybe he is. Well, and I think what he, the reason he thinks that is because he has no other option. Based yeah. on the that sort of back, maybe the last scene, two episodes back, when he's testing the Viltrumite cells, and he's like, nothing kills these things except for maybe another Viltrumite mm. cell. So that leaves him only one option, and that's Mark. If he can find a way to turn a, a son against his father, famously difficult. Uh, yes. Not I for me. Know. I do it almost every day yeah. with my own son. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> Your son's trying to kill you? Uh, we got to wrap up this podcast quickly because it's almost killing time. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, a couple things I wanted to me- uh, mention. Um, I love the montage of people who are are clearly friends of the animators or creators 100%. on the episode. Yes. <laughs> that are drawn in with hyper detail, even though you don't need they have the most detail on the stubble on one dude's face yeah. than anything else in the episode. Yeah. Uh that was funny. And the just a shout out to the news coverage of the fight at the end. The helicopter, crystal clear footage. Everyone in the world gets to watch it on their phone. That cameraman must have rock hands mm-hmm. to capture in a moving helicopter Great footage of um, Omni Man and Killing Immortal. That's a great point. Spoken as a true line producer. 
<laughs> not a line producer. Definitely not. Before we wrap up this episode, what was your invincible moment this time out? Pete, you raised your little finger. What's going on? The yeah, littlest uh, finger. It's not, it's not that little. But uh, so it was for me, it was the Cecil Omni Man kind of chat when Cecil mm. was kind of zapping around talking about like it's good one. questioning him and be like why why won't you tell me what I know you well enough to know you have a reason why is that and then also pushing his buttons like what do you think Mark's gonna do what do you think uh, Debbie's gonna do so I really love that moment that was really such a kind of like interesting like I am not only killing time but I'm also like trying to get to the bottom of this and it just cecil is a very interesting character and when he was like i've seen death so many times you know it kind of gives a grizzled kind of monologue i thought it was very interesting kind of show down there yeah p i don't know if you know but the show's not called Cecil. it's pretty sure it is yeah it's right there in the name <laughs> it's it's actually called Cecil. hole <laughs> it's been Cecil. Yeah, uh, Cecil. I hope hole. there's no hole in Cecil by <laughs> the end of that next episode. That's the expression I always tell my kids. Hey, hey, kids, there's no hole in Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your kids famously don't know how to spell, uh, right? Yeah, well, I'm not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, what about you? What's your invincible hole moment of the episode? Invincible oh hole. <laughs> um, I want to give it up for. Ra- uh, uh, robot in Rex's new clone body, uh, the tear running down his cheek when he looked down at um, the body that he used to inhabit. I thought that was a beautiful moment, surprising moment, caught me off guard. Um, really great way, th- the way that they're able to make us feel for these characters that are not great uh, throughout is really, really great. And a special shout out to Donald uh, going down in his battle with Omni Man. Uh, he he really we didn't see much of him, but he was the no. Colson. He's Cecil's Colson, and oh, boy did he go yeah. out swinging. I was going to choose the opposite end of that shot with the baby Krang dying, but since you kind of covered that moment already, um, the I don't know why I was so surprised by this, but the cyborgs coming out and attacking Dolan yeah. was the moment that made me go, "Oh shit!" The, yeah. It was great. Oh, I love badass. seeing that come back. I didn't expect it. That fight was awesome. Great stuff. Just yeah. good episode all around as we 100%. head into except, the final one. What? Except what for all, uh, when that, all the birds died. That was, that was tough. To, that was yeah, sad, that was sad tough. for the bird heads out there. Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to support our podcast, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast and YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about Invincible. iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen to the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter, comicbookclublive.com to check out this podcast and many, many more. Until next time, this has been the Cecil Stedman Experience. Yeah, 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 yeah